Okay, just now we discussed about the stoichiometry. So non uh, ceramic, we cannot reach uh, stoichiometry because we have a uh, different uh, different balance, especially when you mix metal. Example is uh, uh, ferrum oxide. You have two positive and three positive. So two positive will be bigger compared to three positive. Sorry, three positive will be smaller. Uh, Fe2 positive will be bigger. Then oxide will be bigger. So then in perfection, you have crack, right? So different crack give you different name. The first one, you see there's an origin and then spider web outside. It called impact or point loading. You press here, you will crack from origin. Don't forget. Lah. Okay. Bending, you will see when you bend something, there's a you'll see there's a crack origin there. Uh, then torsion, when you twist it, you twist it, it will not go parallel, but it will go a certain angle. Um, cannot say 45, but there's an angle. Uh, there's an angle. So when you twist it, they will do it. It will be one, uh, one angle there between top and bottom. Uh, okay. Uh, this one, internal pressure, uh, bottle, this one, will crack from, like, blast out. Lah, you crack. Okay, so this is a schematic diagram on a brittle ceramic. So how you draw the defect, there is a source of failure, then it become a cone, the dot one, right? So you have a smooth mirror region, then you have a mist region, we have dot, 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 means you have a like mist, a gray area. Then you have a spike, huh? you have a hacker region. Huh? So you look something like this. Okay, uh, Brita, this is on glass, la. this is on glass, uh, silica rod. Huh? So you have a source of failure. Uh, so this one normally, uh, you see this one, if you're unlucky, you see on your windscreen, your car windscreen, uh, the lolly driver stone one. Uh, like this called what, blue eyes or something. There's lots of name for the crack on it. Uh, so this, uh, there's a source of this one, origin here. Then there is a smooth mirror here. Uh, then you will, you will have some uh, mist region. Uh, mist region. Then you will hacker, so there's a spike there. Okay. okay, so this question asks you to calculate Skokie defect by the one equation I write on the whiteboard there. So calculate number of Skokie defect per cubic meter in potassium chloride at 500 degrees C. Equation, uh, energy is given, right? Energy is given in EV. So remember that the Skokie, uh, the formation is there. So given density is also given. So there's a purpose why they give you density. Eh? So density is to calculate the N. Eh? Uh, N is how many mole? Eh? Actually, how many mole is it? Huh? One mole is 6.023 something. Eh? Uh, okay, so you calculate N by using density. So if you don't understand this one, go chapter four. N equal to N multiplied by rho divided by uh, atomic number of item one plus atomic number of item two. In this case, in this case is potassium chloride KCl. Right. So uh, number of Avogadro six point something ten power twenty three. Uh, density is given. This one is in gram over cm cube. So atomic, this one you go to the periodic table, go and see what is A for K, what is A for CL. Uh, okay, for this exercise, one is 39, one is 35. Huh? You substitute. Okay, you substitute. You convert. 
uh, you take density multiply by the number of avocado. Uh, then remember to convert your meter cube into meter, uh, cm cube into meter. Because you, you are because this question gives you cm cube. Okay, so remember to change uh, this one. This is a careless mistake usually. So you'll forget this one huh, in your calculation. Uh, you press calculator, you get something this, like this. Huh? 10 power, you will show more than 23 one huh? because you're using Avogadro number. If your number less than this one, you need to check back huh? what is wrong. It might be somewhere wrong. Huh? Okay. So once you find your N, put inside all the value you find from the question. Again, your K value is use 8 point something EV. If the question gives you J, Joe, you use another value. Huh? Uh. Okay, we go into phrase diagram. Okay, you go into phrase diagram. So this one you, you are familiar. Lah. Temperature, ALs, 2O3 aluminium oxide and this one is uh, Cl2O3 chromium oxide but this one is important is you know what is on the right hand side All right now from this one is quite easy lah. it's like the syrup uh, not syrup lah, but early early phrase diagram liquid solid middle liquid solid so here if uh, at a certain percentage at a certain temperature, you're able to draw the LOS, uh, the tie diagram, and also level rules. You should be able to calculate how many liquid, how many solid at that particular temperature. Okay. Uh, this is another one. This is aluminum oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, aluminum oxide. Okay. You have MO, MgO, and AlO3. It is a little bit complex, uh, a bit complex compared to the previous one. So liquid, solid, and you have one solid and solid, and then here liquid. So there is uh, you go and remember uh, the table just now this morning. Either is you take toy, you take tick, and uh, this one, uh, solid emit liquid with a V liquid, and uh, it becomes something else. Uh. So there are four processes, uh, eutectic, eutectoid, what else, uh, uh, monolithic, and so on. Uh, so there's a table there. Okay. Uh, okay. So there is an intermediate phrase, or better, a compound called spindle, has a formula of so-and-so that you see on the screen here, MgAlO4. Um, spindle is non stoichiometric matrix for other than 50% mole of uh, ALO. Uh, okay. With this, this one, uh, AMGALO. So they only appeared after this temperature 2000, uh, about 2000. Uh, and also limited solubility at this one your AL2O3 stop at here so try to learn something from here the line stop here means lower than 1400 degree C no matter how many AL2O3 it cannot dissolve at this temperature, huh? so this is how you read the graph. Lah. So if the if the temp if the question asks you what at what temperature there is a limited solubility of something, you go and read left hand side graph. Okay, this is a melting temperature. Okay, melting temperature. This is a melting temperature for MgO. Huh? This is for MgO melting temperature.
So there is a two eutectics. Uh, there are two eutectics point here and here. Here and here because there are two V here. There are two V liquid. V liquid. Then you have eutectic. Uh. Here to here is the eutectic. Okay, then there is a spindle concurrently about this temperature. This is another graph, another freeze diagram. It's Joconia calcia. But anyway, what is important still remains the same. Where is your liquid? Where is your solid? Left hand side, right hand side. And then try to look at the table this morning, right? So eutectic, eutectoid, monolithic. Uh, pro eutectoid and so on. So you're going to see where's your V. Eh? So this is the V liquid. Left hand side, uh, left hand side solid. Right hand side, we don't know. Uh, so very high sun, this one is your eutectic. Okay. How I know left hand side is solid, this is solid. Eh? CaZrO3 is solid. Eh? Okay, so you tell you lah where's monolithic and so on, uh, pecadonal and so on. Uh. Okay. So one eutectic reaction at 225, 2250. Yeah. Um, ZRO3. They are all three have three different crystal structure, pentagonal, monolithic, and cubic. Monolithic, cubic, six cubic, uh, cubic. Okay, two eutectoid reaction. One thousand degree C here. Eight hundred fifty degree here. I go go and see the table. I, this morning I I asked you to go and. And besides that, we'll go and see that table. Then check what is eutectoid, what is the equation for that. Huh? This is another diagram for silica alumina. Uh, again, uh, it just tests you whether you understand phase diagram or not. Temperature, what is the component? This have two components, SiO3 and Al2O3. Liquid, solid. So this is a liquid V. So left hand side, I know this one is a left hand side is liquid. This one, ah, this one, oh, you guys very good, ah. hypo, hyper, hypo, ah. okay. Ah. This one you read, lah. Huh? So there's a certain name, what is a uh, mu light and so on, ah. But again, we won't test you. What, how this one form, but we'll test you on the phase diagram. At what phase, what, what do you see? How many percent of that are, uh, what is that process? Uh, either it's eutectoid, pro eutectoid, uh, eutectic, and so on. Eh? Okay, so the next one we go into composite. Eh? Uh, no, this one is, uh, uh, it's under chapter 10. Uh, and then chapter 10 is actually chapter another chapter but i just combine together uh <laughs> <cannot> idea <laughs> cannot idea okay let, let me let me check how many slides i have yes that's chapter but one more one more Shimmer, ceramic and composite man. we've already done the ceramic already now we go into composite then polymer, one more chapter, then done already. Not, not chapter, la, one more section, then done already. Uh, uh, let me see. I think this one got a loss of sight. 17. Let me see. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> And 
Okay, we go into a bit, a little bit. I show you what is important for this, this, uh, this composite one. The rest you read, huh? Okay, this one you go and read, huh? What is important for composite? It's like your sandwich. Uh. It's like your Subway sandwich. Uh, so inside composite, you have two things. One is matrix. One is a uh, uh, matrix. Um, not in course, it's a matrix and. Okay, advantages, you go and read. Uh. Okay. Uh. Okay, there are two things here is that specific modulus. Specific modulus, you know, young modulus, elastic modulus E. But if you see the word specific, means you divide by density. Eh? You see specific something is divided by density. Specific strength also, you take the UTS, ultimate standard strength, divided by density. Eh? Okay. This one, advantage. Just the advantages, this one you read, huh? Okay. Now I want you to show this one. This one is important. Okay, so uh okay, this one is Kevlar uh 49. Fiber epoxy composition consists of 60% by volume Kevlar 49 fiber and 40% resin. Okay, this Fiber and resin, they form composite. Okay, you want to make composite, you need at least two things. One is the filler, and one is the matrix. Matrix is the resin, is the the, the plastic or the glue. Okay. So density of Kevlar is given, epoxy resin is given. What is the weight percentage of Kevlar and epoxy resin in this composite material? It asks you to calculate weight percentage. Then what is the average density of this composite? Because you mix two things already. Huh? So you ask you what is the average density when you mix this composition by 60-40%. Okay. Now you answer chapter 10 composite question with assumption. Uh, same uh, like uh like chapter chapter four. When you calculate the concentration like one kilogram or one, one hundred gram, so on. In this case, because we are dealing with density, we assume we have one meter cube of material. Okay, you assume in one meter cube, how many you have? So in one meter cube, you have 0.6 meter cube Kevlar, 0.4 meter cube of resin, <laughs> because it's 60, 40. Uh, then, what is density? Density mass divided by volume. So what is mass? You remain this one, pull the volume to the left hand side. Density multiply volume get mass. So huh? you're given in the question. It tell you 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 make this uh, composite ratio is 60 40. Huh? So you put in the value row multiply by volume you get mass. Resin also the same In here. Megagram. Huh? Megagram. Why? Because the, the question gives you megagram. Uh, so you calculate megagram. Huh? Uh, but normal, normal your communication with other people is use kilogram. But for this kind of question, you just follow. Uh, so total mass is 1.3 megagram. So you know weight percentage, right? Yeah, okay, so you just take lah. weight percentage of Kevlar equal to total mass divided by something, uh, the, the Kevlar divided by total mass. Lah. Okay, you get 64% WT, yeah? 20%. Then if you're lazy to calculate, you just take 100% minus this one. Okay, or you can 
take 0 0.4, 0 0.48 divided by 1.368. Same, uh, same answer. Okay. So once you get this one, what is the average density? Uh, so average you take the the density equal to mass divided by volume. So mass equal to 1.368 divided by 1. Uh, okay, so this is the answer. Lah. Okay, reinforce, reinforce composite. This one you read lah. There are lots many types of reinforce composite. Um, again, I want to highlight why specific tensile modulus. You take modulus divided by density. Specific tensile strength. You take tensile strength divided by density. So this is another comparison graph. So these are different type of uh, composite. Okay. So in general, we want to make composite. You need two items. Fiber and matrix. Okay, fiber and matrix, then you get composite. Uh, you already see the explanation in the previous exercise, right? Why we need fiber? They give you able to pull. Fiber, you're very good in pulling, right? So it give you very good tensor property. Matrix, they are the binder. They've joined the binder together. And matrix, like plastic, is also able to absorb vibration. Uh, so they combine good the two strength of these two materials, and then they give you the composite. Lah. Okay. Now, you want to make the the material stronger is depend how you align your fiber. Your fiber have direction one. Eh? So let's say your fiber is one direction. If your fiber you lay like this, let's say you make. Uh, composite. Are they? Your fiber is in this direction. You pull like this, very good. But if I peel it, uh, it's very weak. Uh. I try to peel like this. I bend it, then it crack. So composite, normally we don't use this one. We will join another direction. We will overlap. One layer, one layer, one layer like that. So that no matter how you pull, how you tear, how you twist it, then you are in good good orientation. Some some they even design a certain angle, 45, 45. Right? Um. Um, vertically. Yeah. Um, but actually fiber they are very, 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 very thin. So you peel actually quite hard also. Uh, because of the metrics. Uh, so these are uh, the types of uh, ceramic, uh, not ceramic, uh, uh, composite with number of cycle of failure. You dynamic test, you load, 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 release, load, release. Maximum stress, you get this graph. Huh? Okay, so this is the thing that I, I mentioned in the whiteboard just now. Unidirection means every layer is the same. Zero orientation, all straight, straight, straight on. Then you pour in the resin, let it cool. This one is a cross, a quasi isotrope. So every layer you change the direction. Zero, 90, 45. Positive, negative is left or right. La. You to the left or right. Huh? Okay. Now, I want to highlight this one. I saw strain direction. What is strain? Still remember what is strain? Strain is deformation. Uh -huh. Yes. So this one strain is because you are now dealing with uh, composite. Uh, so you need to be careful. This one we look at layer, like layer kicks. Uh. So you see white color, blue color, light color, blue color. Then you have a fiber layer and matrix layer. Fiber layer, matrix layer, and area AC. Area AC is the area of composite. So why we mention this area? Because 
it will either the area and the force will give you either is a tensile or it's a strain behavior or shear behavior. Okay, okay now. If this is an area, if the force is perpendicular, it becomes normal loading or normal stress. Huh? It is normal stress, force divided by area. This is the area, huh? this is the force. So if it becomes shear stress, shear stress is when the force is parallel to the area. This one becomes shear stress already. So shear force divided by area, same area. So here you have a laminate things, huh? so be careful. It pull like this, this surface is normal, but if you look at this surface, it becomes shear already. Huh? This surface on the top is normal loading, but this side, it becomes shear loading already. Huh? The force go parallel to the surface. This surface, huh? not this surface. Huh? Okay. So we will do exercise on the ISO strain, means deformation is the same in all direction. Then we will use elastic modulus E in terms of elastic modulus moduli. E, F, F for fiber, M for matrix mean fiber and resin, matrix and resin. And volume percentage, you have three volume percentage of uh, composite, fiber and matrix. So we, we use uh, these uh, two, two parameter, elastic E, elastic modulus E and uh, volume percentage. Okay. <clears throat> so when we have load on the, on the sample, uh, composite sample, so the Total force experienced by the composite taking care by two member. One is fiber, one is matrix. Okay. So you know that stress equal to force divided by A. So you put your A to the left hand side, it becomes force. So FC becomes stress C, AC, which is the composite stress, and fiber and matrix. This is the equation that we will expect you to write. Eh? Every time become composite question, you expect you to write from here. Fc equal to FF plus Fm. Then we expect you to write this one, stress equal to Fa. You write this one, stress A composite equal to stress A fiber plus stress A matrix. So since strength, since length of layer in matrix and fiber are equal, the area can be replaced by volume fraction. Okay, volume fraction. Why volume fraction? Why it can be replaced by V because the length is equal. Okay, the thickness is same. So you can use replace A become V. This is the next equation we expect from your solution. Eh? You write this one, write this one, then write this one. Okay. Then, since the volume fraction of total composite is one, then VC is one. That's there. Eh? So, how you get VC? VC equal to VF plus V matrix. Eh? Because composite, you only need two things on it, fiber and matrix. So you mix these two, you get composite. So total, you have 100%. So you got X and Y. Uh, so normally the VC, we get one. Uh, we put one. Okay. So for ISO strain, for ISO strain, uh, um, and with the good bonding, the strain, is the same for matrix and uh, fiber. The deformation is the same for that one. So we have two equations, uh, very important equation for composite. You derive from the force 
until here. Then another concept is the strain. Strain handle a deformation handled by the total composite will be the same as fiber and matrix because they are bond together. So you divide two, you take one divided by two. What do you get? This one and this one, you divide, what do you get? Hooke's law, what is Hooke's law? Stress equal to E, you right? Now you divide, what do you get? Take this one, divide this one. You get what? Modulus Yang, right? You get capital E, right? Okay. So you divide, you'll get sigma C, V, C. And this one, this one is one. Man. That's why you don't see V, C here anymore. This is one. Then sigma F, E, F, V, F, and so on. So you can write EC equal to EF, VF plus EM, VM. Eh? So for composite, these three equation is important. This one, this one, and this one. Uh, okay. Uh, then this kind of question will be like your test one, question two, question. I'll give you a table. You choose which, which kind of matrix and resin to use. Okay, uh, because this equation is matrix and mat fiber and matrix only, uh, then it gives you elongation, uh, the, the young modulus. Uh, then it will be the same pattern. It gives you a table. Okay, you apply. Then a uh, customer say, I want this uh, elastic modulus. I can only extend this one, so and so. So propose what is the fiber and resin that you can use. Okay. Uh, so this is only can use for binary mixture, huh? means two member or two. More than two cannot use. Huh? More than two, you need to derive from here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the rest you read. Huh? It's the same deform, uh, derivation steps. Huh? Derivation steps means it's the ratio between the fiber and matrix loading. And then you extend this formula in the stress area. F equal to stress, uh, stress equal to force divided by area. You extend. Then this one, stress by using Hooke's law, it become this one. Then you simplify, huh? you simplify. This one cancel. Stress. Our strain is the same. And so you get this one. So you know that because thickness is the same, so you can change area in volume. Okay. So let's look at this exercise, then I think we call it a day. Okay. okay. So uh, this is a, a test standard or very near to final. Okay, so it asks you to calculate modulus of elasticity, which is capital E, tensile strength, fraction of load carried by fiber for the following composition. Huh? Tensile strength is the stress, this one. Okay, so composite, we have two member, 60% E glass fiber, have E, this one, and tensile strength of this one, and epoxy resin with EM, this one, with the strength, this one. So you apply the three formula just now. So you know that one of the three equation is this one, EC equal to EF fiber plus EV, uh, EV fiber plus EV matrix. So you have, what you have, you have EF here, EM here, and you know percentage. So when you have a percentage, also assume. 
right? So you have 60% fiber, 40% produced by 60% fiber, so 40% resin. Uh, there's a, actually there's a VC here, but VC is one. Yeah. Uh, so you substitute the value, then you get your EC. Okay. Then the second part. Uh, if question asks for E modulus elastic in longitudinal direction, then you can use this to calculate this formula because it's longitudinal direction. Tensile in longitudinal direction. Eh? <clears throat> so easy treated as again uh, I put this one because some student they confuse uh, because they don't know when I, I can use uh, elongation and the side one uh. so second one tensile strength there's another formula uh, stress VC equal to stress fiber stress matrix so VC one and so on put in the value from the question then you get your stress c there huh? what else fraction uh, this one fraction of load carried by fiber again this one is the last equation you see on the screen just now so load on the fiber divided by matrix equal to extend this one into ev Uh, this one uh? for composite is this one uh? Uh, this actually is uh, this 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 uh, three only uh. three only then four uh, this one uh, one more this one one is a ratio load ratio. load on fiber or matrix uh, you use this one okay mm. so you continue with the question you substitute the this one so for composite material under iso strain you can use this formula all right so ef uh, uh, okay ef so this one is FM uh, fiber matrix, but for composite under iso strain, straight away you this formula. This is fiber divided by composite. Because the question asks you to find fraction of load carried by fiber, which is this one. Okay, so this one, load carried by fiber. Hmm. Uh, okay, so this ratio is a fraction of load carried by fiber is uh, 90, 0 point, uh, 97% because if you pull this one to the right, your FC is 97% of the load handled by FC. Senna? Yes, yes, yeah. So normally the for composite fiber is very, very high. Yeah, do this one. You don't have matrix load, ma. You don't have matrix load. Okay, there's a derivation step there. La. If you want to go, then you go home and derive it. La. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I think I, I saved this one for next class. Okay. Yeah, we stop here. Bye.